Let's discuss the levels of processing theory. The levels of processing theory was proposed by Craig and Lockhart back in 1972 as a result of numerous criticisms to the multi-store model of memory. The basic idea was that how we remember information depends largely on how we encode it or how deeply we process the information. If we only process information at a very shallow level, we don't pay much attention to the meaning. We might just pay attention to the very surface characteristics such as the tone or how something sounds or how it looks, those basic physical characteristics. And this occurs during maintenance rehearsal. So for example, trying to remember a telephone number long enough to call the person you're trying to call. Once you've done that action, the information leaves your short-term memory. So it's maintained in short-term memory, but doesn't really get transferred to long-term memory. In contrast, deep processing. We pay close attention to the meaning of the items we're trying to remember. So for example, when you're studying for an exam or a test, rather than just kind of keeping information at a very basic, shallow level, you might start to think of images of the material you're trying to remember, or you might relate the stuff you're trying to remember to other items in your memory. So you're making much more deeper connections with that information. And this is what happens during elaborative rehearsal. So let's have a look at a basic levels of processing experiment. So participants in a study would be uh, doing a basic memory test, but in order to manipulate how they remembered the information, uh, the following experiment was conducted. So for example, they'd be asked a question. Does the word that you'll see in a moment have capital letters? Then they would have the word presented to them, for example, bird with a capital B, and then they'd have to answer yes or no. So participants were given three different levels, they had to do three different things. So if they were kept at the very shallow level, they would ask that question, is the word printed in capital letters? The next level, the kind of bit more deeper, they might be asked, does the word rhyme with train? So they have to do a little bit more thinking at this deeper level than the first level. But the deepest level, they'd have to do like a fill in the blank activity. Does the word fit into the sentence, he saw a blank on the street? So at this deep level, they're actually starting to process meaning. You can see the results over here. When they were then later asked to recall as many words as they could, they remembered as meant much more from the fill in the blanks level of processing then followed by the rhyme situation. And then you can see when they ha were asked just to remember if the word had capital letters, which is a very shallow level of processing, they didn't really remember many of those words. So the basic idea is the deeper that you process the items that you're trying to remember, the more likely you are to recall them. And that's the basic levels of processing idea. So let's talk about a similar related uh, concept called transfer appropriate processing. This the idea is that memory is enhanced if the type of task you do at encoding matches the type of task at retrieval. So again, let me talk you through an experiment that examined this. So Morris et al had this set up. He gave uh, participants a memory task again. So at the encoding stage, they had to encode the words in terms of their meaning. And at the retrieval stage, they also had to uh, retrieve um, the items using a standard recognition test. So the participants were given 32 sentences. And then they were asked the following question. Uh, sorry, this is the, they were given the following sentence. The blank rode the bike, followed by the target word boy. Then in the recall part of the test, they were given 32 of those target words that they'd already seen. 
and 32 new words and they had to identify which of the ones that they had seen before. Now a different set of participants were given a very similar setup except they were given the 32 sentences but they were given a rhyming task rather than a meaning task. So for example they were given sentences that said blank rhymes with toy followed by the target word boy. Then of course in the recall part of the experiment again they were given 32 target words and then 32 new words and they had to try and remember as many of those words that they had seen before. So the results showed this. When the participants did, were participated in the meaning task they remembered 82% of those words correctly. When they were participating in the rhyming task they only remembered 62% of the words correctly. So, so far, this is a pretty standard levels of processing experiment. It's showing that our memory is better for when we do that deeper level of processing. The meaning task is a deeper level of processing than the rhyming task. So that's what we would expect. However, in a uh, modification to the experiment, they were given the same kind of thing, 32 sentences given at the encoding stage, some participants had a meaning task, other participants had a rhyming task, but the key difference was how they were asked to re retrieve or recall the information. They were asked to give a rhyming recognition test. So basically they were asked whether the words rhymed with previous words. What do you think the results showed? Basically, participants remembered more, 50% almost, of the words when they were given a rhyming task and a rhyming recognition test. They did better with the rhyming than they did with the meaning tasks. So this goes against what we would expect for levels of processing. So this finding is not consistent with the levels of processing theory. And what it indicates is that our memory is enhanced when encoding and retrieval match. So in other words, when they were asked to encode the information in a rhyming way and then get it back out of their brain in a rhyming way, then memory was better. When they were asked to put it into their brains in a meaning way, but then be recalled in a rhyming way, memory was worse. So we want these two things to match how we get it in and how we get it out. We want those two things to match for optimal memory. And that's transfer appropriate processing. Let me tell you about encoding specificity. When we are remembering information, we learn that information together with its context, our surroundings. Badley did a very, very exp famous experiment called the diving experiment. And he found, his results showed that our memory was better when encoding and retrieval occurred in the same location. So his experiment was called the diving experiment because he actually changed where people remembered information, either underwater or on land. So you can see from the results, when people studied and were trying to remember the, the words underwater, and then when they were tested underwater, memory was pretty high. But when they remembered underwater and tested on land, memory was lower. Similarly, when they were asked to remember and re uh, encode the words on land, but then tested underwater, these things are not matching, memory was lower. When people, lastly, when people were tested on land, remembering and testing on land, memory was higher. So the locations have to match in order for memory to be the highest. He did a slightly less uh, extreme experiment and did it with um, studying, regular studying. People who study with noise, background noise, um, and then tested with background noise, their memory was much better than if you studied with noise but then were tested in the quiet. And likewise, if you study in quiet but then tested with noise, 
memory is lower than if you're testing quiet so you're remembering quiet and testing quiet memory is better and so lastly this is related to state dependent learning learning is associated with a particular internal state so you, the mood you are when you are being tested your memory is going to be better if you can try and match that mood when you are studying so you almost have to get yourself in the mood uh, if you know you're going to be anxious and a little bit stressed out when you are taking the test you almost need to kind of get yourself geared up and feel that same way when you are learning the material so your mood at learning it will match the mood when you're being tested on it so to summarize let's have a quick rundown of these different theories and let's see how they can be applied to help you study better for exams in order to remember the information you have to process it at a deeper level this is the basic levels of processing idea so you have to make it meaningful highlighting a book is not enough that's a very shallow level of processing you might think that you're getting the information in but in fact like I said it's always very almost a maintenance rehearsal you need to elaborate on that information make it meaningful generate uh, you know, make connections nextly sorry, next you have to match how you learn the information with how you'll be tested um, if you're going to be tested in multiple choice format then try and do practice quizzes in multiple choice format if you're going to have to write a short essay make sure you can learn the information in that format so match how you learn it with how you'll be tested and that's the transfer appropriate processing theory also match your learning environment to your own testing environment um, so if you're going to be tested in a quiet location which is most likely then study in a quiet location and then of course lastly is matching your internal mood or state uh, again if you're going to feel a little bit anxious in that quiet testing room then you almost have to get yourself in the same mental state when you're learning try and match these two conditions and your memory will be enhanced <laughs>